In the past 40 years, one economic model has dominated the global economy, a model that focuses on growth, growth of production, growth of consumption, and growth of profits. To create this global growth economy, most governments agreed to create rules that benefit multinational corporations, privatize public resources and public goods, and push down real wages. This profit-focused global economy has caused two global crises, a crisis of deepening inequalities between people and a global environmental crisis. Together, these crises threaten the future of civilization and our planet. Inequalities between the rich and poor have grown in almost all countries. In fact, NASA-funded research found that inequalities are so high that they have become a threat to the very existence of civilization. But inequalities between countries have grown even larger. The bottom half of the world's 7 billion people collectively own the same as the richest 85 people in the world. Think about that. The richest 85 people own the same as 3.5 billion people. And 80% of the world's population still live on less than $10 per day. Another way of looking at this is through the Walton family. They own the world's largest retail store, Walmart, and have a collective net worth of $150 billion. Their wealth is derived from the work of poor people. Women garment workers in places like Bangladesh work for poverty wages, forgo health and safety standards, and risk their lives to make cheap disposable clothes for companies like Walmart. In an entire year, a woman garment worker from Bangladesh will make less than Christy Walton makes in one single second. There's a limit to an environment's ability to restore itself. And when we exceed these tipping points, we reach irreversible environmental changes that threaten our very existence. Three of the nine planetary boundaries have already been exceeded. If we continue to consume the way we have, the results will be disastrous. In Bangladesh, tides are rising 10 times faster than the global average, yet the country only produces 0.3% of the emissions driving climate change. By 2050, 50 million people from Bangladesh will have to flee the country. Where will they go? Will they go to the countries with the most historical responsibility for climate change? Or will they be forced to migrate across borders? Women comprise 70% of the world's poor. They consume the least, are paid the least, and own the least, yet they pay the highest price. They are 14 times more likely to die in disasters. This is not an accident. This is a product of choosing to cut government spending, of privatizing public services and assets, and of providing tax havens for foreign industries. It's a product of growing multinational companies, unlimited extraction of natural resources, and overconsumption. In reality, we have a system of governance that secures profits for billionaires, but not a global system to secure human rights economic justice, environmental justice, and accountability to peoples. Governments have created a system of binding rules to ensure the flow of wealth from developing countries to the richest countries. Rich countries try to compensate for the huge and growing gap by giving aid to poor countries, about $130 billion each year. So why does the wealth gap keep getting bigger? One reason is that large corporations are taking more than $900 billion out of poor countries each year through a form of tax avoidance called trade mispricing. On top of this, each year poor countries are paying about $600 billion in debt service to rich countries on loans that have been paid off many times over. And then, there's the money that poor countries lose from trade rules imposed by rich countries to get access to more resources and cheaper labor. 
This costs poor countries about $500 billion a year. Altogether, that's more than $2 trillion that flows from some of the poorest parts of the world to the richest every year. Who is developing who here? People around the world are demanding a new, fairer approach to development. They are demanding development justice. They are demanding development that aims to reduce inequalities of wealth, power, and resources between countries, between rich and poor, and between men and women. A truly transformative development agenda requires a range of goals and targets. A new development agenda requires money. We can take these funds from global taxes on harmful practices and from those who exploit the world's resources, particularly transnational corporations. We can tax financial speculation globally. A financial transaction tax of 0.05% could raise $650 billion a year for governments to tackle poverty and address climate change. Less than 1% of the total value of extractive industries globally is enough to cover the annual cost of universal access to clean renewable energy. Just 5% of high net worth individual's wealth is enough to cover the annual cost of universal social protection and universal social services. Just 1% of the global military budget would ensure universal public education. A more just and sustainable world is possible only if we demand it. Join us and demand development justice.